Hello, my name is Matthias. Welcome to the FPL Scope and my team selection video for Game Week 25, or should I say double Game Week 25? Because we have a Game Week where both Man City and Liverpool and Luton and Brentford have double Game Weeks. So it's going to be pretty interesting Game Week 25. But before we take a look at my team and my plans for this upcoming double Game Week, uh, let's take a look at what I did in Game Week 24. And also let's take a look at how my free hit drafted, how my free hit draft is looking for 25. And also take a look at another manager of the week for this week in the FPL Scope Mini League. So a lot to get through. So let's just go straight at it with my Game Week 24 score. And I got 77 points while doing a minus four hit with uh, two transfers. And uh, that was my biggest mistake this uh, Game Week. I've had pretty much one major mistake that has like four or five Game Weeks. Uh, and it's hurt me every single time. Uh, this time it was selling a Stupinian for Doughty, which by itself is a decent move. I, did, I mean, Stupinian got zero points. He hasn't looked that good lately. Doughty has a double game week now in 25. So that makes sense. Doughty also has a double game week in uh, in 20, game 28 as well. So that's sort of why I, brought, why I brought him in already. Just to have that really good game against Sheffield United, where he sadly got, only got two points. Even though he had nine key passes. And then having for the doubles in both 25 and in 28. But... I should have just waited with this move. Like I had no reason to do a minus four to basically buy Dalty so I could bench Gabriel because Gabriel ended up scoring 12 points and he was on my bench and I did a minus four hit to bring in Dalty in the first place. I mean, the minus four hit is something that I probably would have had to have done uh, either this week or like in game week 25 or uh, eventually either way to get in Dalty. So the minus four, I sort of like that that would have happened anyway but the 12 points or the 10 point difference between Gabriel and Doughty is is a big miss for this game week so uh yeah uh, pretty uh, annoyed about that um i think like most of the week i was pretty set on doing just actually doing Solanke to Darwin Nunes that was like my only or my big plan for the game week and then a couple hours before the deadline i started thinking about hmm maybe i should bring in another double game week player because i do have that uh, possibility of having another double game week player in, in 25 while still having 11 players playing in game week uh, 26 which is a blank game week uh, so i was sort of getting onto this uh, type of uh, thinking and then we had the leak a couple like 45 minutes or so before the deadline with the burner not starting and that made me go with the burner to jota instead of doing um the solanke to to darwin move and at that point, I was just like, okay, fair enough. I'll just go for immediate uh, gains, hopefully, with Doughty coming in. Because um, I knew I was going to get Doughty eventually. Uh, and then I just did that move as well. And I also could have done, basically, I could have sold Gusto rather than Stepinen as well. But that ended up being the better decision. Because Gusto got six points. He got, a, got an assist for Chelsea against Crystal Palace. Again, he looked pretty good offensively. So Gusto is someone that I keep switching my mind on every single week. It feels like I need to sell him at some points, and I need to keep him, then I need to sell him, then I need to keep him. And same goes for now as well. Like the immediate future for Gusto is not looking good with uh, Man City away in this next fixture. Then he has a blank, and then he has Brentford and Newcastle, two teams that we expect to score against Chelsea. But he's also really cheap. He also has really good fixtures from Game Week 30 onwards. If I do want to keep my wall card longer, if I want to keep my wall card until Game Week 35, which is a possibility still. Um, that's something that I might do. Um, and if that's the case, I really want Gusto on top of Palmer because Chelsea players are going to be really important to have from game week 30 onwards uh, because of the double game weeks that they will have eventually and stuff. So I think. So yeah, Gusto, I don't really, I can't really decide on, but for now, pretty happy to, to just have him and he could just stay benched basically. And I have enough players for game week 26 anyway. And I'm most likely going to free hit in game week 29 or I'm going to do a wild card in game week 27. Uh, to do it early. If I don't do it in Game Week 35, I would probably do it in Game Week 27. It's either that or doing it in Game Week 30, which is what most people will do, I, I assume. Apart from, I may, maybe, I think, I think there's a, there's a slight chance that Game Week 27 might be like a big bandwagon wildcard type of week because we'll get so much information right before Game Week 27 with the FA Cup results and stuff. Um, and I think there's going to be a huge, like, uh, influx of FPL content creators looking at plans, future plans, and how they can walk it in 27 and have like a lot of double game week players to so 28, have uh, 11 players for game week 29 without using the free hits, and still having a decent team beyond that as well. I think that's going to happen quite a lot. A lot of FPL content creators will be planning ahead, just like me, for example. Like, I'm going to do that as well and look into my potential future if I do a walk in game week 27. And I think that's going to be a pretty good strat strategy that's going to be getting quite the big bandwagon as well. 
And then it depends. I think it's going to diverge a bit. Some people are going to do wildcard 27 and not free hit in 29, and other people will do a wildcard in 27 with a free hit in 29 in mind. So they have a really good team for a game of 30 onwards while still having a lot of double gaming players in gaming 28 as well. So there's a lot of different tactics. Uh, I've talked a little bit about the chip strategies earlier in this, uh, this week in my videos. Had um, a strategy sort of stream where I looked through an off stream strategy video where I looked through four different teams for you guys, my uh, my viewers who sent in their team IDs, and I checked out your teams and how that fits in between giving 24 or giving 25 and 29 at least. But yeah, check that out if you haven't already. But back to the subject at hand, which is my giving 24 score. Um, 77 points is not too bad. I end up getting just a small little red arrow in the end. Gusto six points and Palmer's ten points help me in the end. Uh, this has happened a couple times this past uh, few weeks where the game week has looked just absolutely terrible and then the last one or two games uh, or the last game basically I've had a huge boost and uh, and be been able to sort of have the same rank that I've always had uh, basically for the past like five game weeks right around 60k. I'm pretty disappointed that I haven't been able to climb. I really wish I had um, done a couple different things or a couple things differently and I would have had so many more points. Uh, I've been sort of wasting my potential the last few game weeks, and, and that's sort of annoying. But at the same time, I'm quite happy to still be in the top around the top 70k, uh, just about only 40 points behind the top 10k, which is not too bad at this point of the, the season. So still in a pretty good position, but I wish it was even better because it easily could have been if I'd just been a bit smarter with my moves lately, including this past game week where I did the Doughty in for minus four to bench Gabriel. It's always stupid to bench someone uh, or do a minus four hit to bench someone good like that. Uh, that's never a good idea. Like, who knows? Maybe Doughty could have been injured as well. Like, it would have been uh, doing that transfer already. It's just kind of just dumb because you didn't really. I didn't really need to fix a problem there. I, I was. I fixed the problem that wasn't there. Um, so yeah, pretty annoyed that I did that, but I can't really change the past. I'm just gonna have to look forward to the future and see what I can do in the future. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold is also kind of a letdown. He had an assist pretty early in the game uh, for Liverpool against Burnley. Obviously, I was hoping uh, for big things for him in the double game week. I had him. Uh, I brought him in in game week 19, actually, and then I walked him in game week 20 and still kept him. And then since that point, he's just been terrible because of the injuries. Um, he's been out um, and hasn't really gotten that many points at all. So he's been a huge uh, letdown for me. He at least got the four points this time, so I got some points at least from him before he was subbed off, and now he's injured and out for the next couple couple game weeks as well. So, so yeah, kind of a letdown there for it, uh, with Trent Alexander Arnold. Luckily for me, Jota came in and did pretty well for me, seven points. The Bruyne did get an assist, however, after he came on for, for Man City, so I'm pretty sad about uh, <laughs> not having the Bruyne anymore as well, but he might be someone that I bring back in game of 25, so it's going to be a lot of players that go in and out of my team. Uh, Salah as well is someone that I might get back in for the team as well, even though I sold him uh, for the Bruyne in game 23, and then I sold the Bruyne for Jota, and then now I might sell Jota for Salah, I don't know. It's kind of crazy, like my, my moves have been kind of stupid lately, I'm pretty short-term uh, thinking. Um, so yeah, pretty annoyed with myself for doing a lot of like wasteful moves, but, but yeah. What wasn't wasteful was putting the captaincy on Holland, and I think that's something that's going to, going to keep happening now in the future game weeks. Next game week, spoilers, triple captaincy, it's a big possibility for Holland. Most likely I'm going to do it, I think I'm like 90% there uh, of him being triple captain, so... That's going to be good. Saka with 15 points, huge for my FPL team. Not so good for my uh, favorite team in, in the Premier League, West Ham, who lost 6-0 against Arsenal at home. Absolutely terrible, but but at least I got some Saka points to show for it. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, and I also didn't get the 12 Gabriel points, sadly, played against West Ham. That's probably why I was sort of a bit hesitant to start him, because he did play against my favorite team. So, again, something stupid uh, in FPL. So a rule you shouldn't really... A rule you should follow is not let your favorite team affect your thinking when it comes to FPL, but yeah, either way, 67k, 39 points behind the top 10k, uh, almost 1,500 points in total, pretty good at this point of the season. Uh, but let's take a look at something else that I did pretty badly this past week, and that was my free hit draft for Gaming 24. Ended up getting just 60 points, part of that is because I sort of went a little bit differential with my captaincy with uh, Son, I expected him to start and he didn't, he did come on though and got an assist pretty pretty quickly, so I think if he had started that game for, for Spurs, I think he could have had a massive score, so he could have actually rivaled Holland's 13 points if he actually started the match, but he didn't, and that was always the risk with Son. And basically the only reason that I went for him as captain was to have someone as a differential in midfield, because Jota, Foden and Palmer are three really popular picks. Son, I mean, 
even without the captain's armband, he would have been a nice differential for that game week. So I should have just stuck with the captain's on hold on. But that was a really late change. If you watched the video or the team section video last week, I actually had the captain's on hold on. And then while I was doing the video, I was sort of just like tempted to go with Son, and I just did it mid mid video basically, uh, and changed it on the fly. And I shouldn't have done that, but but either way, that was the biggest. Uh, that wasn't the biggest letdown of the game week really. Uh, the defense pretty bad. Van Dijk two points conceded against uh, Burnley. They scored a, a set piece. Chilwell two points for Chelsea. I did expect them to keep a clean sheet against Palace. They didn't. And Gusto, who was my other potential Chelsea player, who I probably would have had if I if I didn't have him in my own team and I wanted to go with someone uh, who was really attacking at the start of the season in Chilwell. Um, yeah, I would have gone with Gusto, who got six points, but Chilwell got only two points. And Doughty also with the one point, letting me down in this free hit draft as well. Edison goal with seven points was good, though. Jota with seven points was nice. Darwin with six points, not as nice for me in my rank in FPL, but nice for the free hit draft at least. That he got the, the bonus point in the end. And the goal that he scored. He also had a major chance missed, obviously, because it's Darwin. Cunha, really, really disappointing there that he will get injured. He's now also out for most of the season, it seems like. Just really disappointing all around. I had really high hopes for Cunha, both for this game week and potentially game week 26 and beyond as well, where I might have brought him in for my team as well. But now, sadly, that's not going to happen, and maybe Wolves will suffer a bit for it as well in general. So not the best uh, game week for my free draft either, after a couple strong uh, game weeks uh, when it comes to my free drafts. Obviously, I didn't free it myself, and I, I didn't really advise many people to free it either. This game of 25 might be a different story if you don't have any Liverpool or City assets, but we'll get to that when we look at that team. But just to wrap up the free team for game of 24, 60 points, uh, like I mentioned, a game week rank of around 6 million is just absolutely awful, and my three differentials were all kind of duds as well. Um, partly that's due to just unlucky things with Cunha being injured. I think he could have scored against Brentford. Uh, Son also not starting, and then Chilwell conceding against Crystal Palace because Chelsea you can't really trust uh, at any point really. But yeah, not the best uh, free hit. Let's see if I can do better for this next game week in game week 25. So this is obviously a huge game week uh, to free hit. I think this is going to be one of the more popular game weeks to free hit. Um, obviously that's always going to happen when it comes to doubles or blanks. That's usually the game weeks where people are free hitting. But I think the major downside to free hitting in game week 25 which is also a downside to this team that you can see now, is the fact that Holland is only a normal captain and not a triple captain. Because uh, this is a huge gimmick for Holland. Chelsea at home, Brentford at home. Uh, he makes the most sense in the world to have as a captaincy uh, choice. Also should have really had the triple captaincy choice as well for him here, but it's a free hit draft. You can't use your free hit and your triple captain at the same time, so he will have to be only a captain. But, but yeah, Holland still really good to have. De Bruyne and Foden, I think just going with Man City attacking players is, is the way to go if you could choose freely. I do really like the likes of Ake, for example, in defense. He's someone I'm going to talk to when I talk about when it comes to my own team as well. But I think you just need to go with the attackers for these two really good fixtures for uh, for City, uh, Brentford and Chelsea. Two pretty good uh, teams to target in general, uh, especially when that, with them defensively. Uh, also tripling up with Liverpool, Darwin, Jota, and then Konate. And the only reason that I have Konate is the fact that I don't have enough money in the bank basically to get Virgil van Dijk or Robertson. I think those two guys are probably better picks, but I think also Konate could start both he's going to start at least one of those games probably both I, th I still think and he also has some goal threat shouldn't uh, shouldn't forget about that either so i think konata is actually a pretty good player uh, to have on a free hit especially but i think bringing in liverpool players at this point is going to be risky regardless unless you have still an easy way to have um have 11 players playing for gaming 26 but that's that's the risk when you don't have a free hit that you can't potentially bring in another Liverpool player because it will just be another transfer used for someone that's not going to play in game week 26. So you might as well not do that just for the double game week because he's any Liverpool player will have the same amount of fixtures in game week 25 and game week 26 as any other team basically apart from Man City, Brentford, uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, and more more matches than Chelsea and uh, Spurs who only have one match in those two game weeks put together. But but yeah, uh, that makes it difficult to bring in Konate for, as like a single game week punt, um, I think, or as a player to transfer in as, uh, as a regular, regular transfer. But on a free hit, he's actually a pretty nice differential there. So quite like him as well. I've also actually tripled up on Arsenal, which is kind of interesting because they don't have a double game week, but they are just in absolutely fantastic form. I think Raya is the best cheap-ish goalkeeper obviously you could go with someone like uh, Allison, for example and have Saliba instead in, in the defense but again the money issue there the team value for this team is 102.3 so you might even not be able to afford this team either if you're on a free hit 
Uh, if you're not if you're not able to afford this, I think the downgrade I would do is just Tony to Adebayo. I think that would be uh, more than good enough. I think um, Luton have slightly preferable fixtures to to Brentford, but we know Tony is a much better player than Adebayo. Even though Adebayo is a good player in his own right. Uh, but he's a better player. He's also on penalties. So I think Tony is a better pick. But if you really need the cash, I think downgrading Tony to Adebayo is, is worth it. Otherwise, you could do um, another downgrade, like potentially downgrade Saka to someone else. But I, I just really like Saka in that Burnley fixture with how the Arsenal are looking lately and how Saka is looking lately as well. Getting points every single game week uh, nowadays. So really like having him. really like having Gabriel in my team. And that's also, again, repenting for my sins in game 24 when I didn't have... Gabriel starting in my own team. So, yeah, tripling up on Arsenal. I also have Doughty in defense. I think he was unlucky not to get any returns last time around when I brought him in for a hit. He had nine key passes, like I mentioned. Easily could have had an attacking return. Playing as Sheffield United, he probably should have had a clean sheet as well, but for some reason, Luton just decided to not show up against Sheffield United for some reason. Uh, but Man United at home, Liverpool away. Not the best fixtures, but it's two fixtures, so I assume Doughty could at least get one assist uh, potentially, and that would help a lot including the four appearance points that he will get from playing 90 minutes in both games, as he'll most likely do, because Saudi is a pretty important player for Luton. Uh, apart from that, Tony, I've already mentioned, triple Liverpool, triple City, triple Arsenal. Uh, that's pretty much it. The bench is just cheap as possible, basically. The Brock against Bournemouth at home. Pretty easy match. Bell playing for... Uh, for uh, Luton in those fixtures against Man United and Liverpool, Van Hecke against Sheffield United away for 4.0, not too bad. And then Colby Mino as like the cheap, po- cheapest possible um, player for for a uh, midfield position, basically. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the free draft for Game 25. I think it's going to be pretty doing pretty well. I actually have eight of these players uh, myself, and one of them being the Broncos on the bench, but seven players in the starting 11 uh, 7 out of 11 players in my starting 11 I will have in this uh, this game week I think um, that, that seems a bit too high Gabriel, Saka, Doughty Jota, Foden Holan, and De Bruyne most likely I'll get uh, potentially, we'll, we'll see about that with, with the transfers but I'll have either 7 or 6 out of, out of the starting 11 here which is pretty good and I think a lot of people can say the same so I don't think the free hit is looking too good for most people but if you like i said don't have many liverpool players or many city players for example if you have like one player from each team then i think free hits 25 is perfectly viable because you really need to go all in when it comes to these two teams uh in game 25 if you can i think but yeah that's pretty much the free hit draft now let's move on to one final bit of thing, a bit, a bit of uh, content before we get to my team plans for Game 25 myself, and that is the Manager of the Week from this past week in the FPL Scope Mini League. And we actually had two managers, managers of the week in the FPL Scope Mini League, and one of them was featured on the podcast yesterday with uh, Kevin and I talking about uh, his team. He got 94 points. And then uh, this manager, Ogochukwu Anajemba, I would say is his name. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Also got 94 points, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the transfers are also pretty interesting with Saliba to Gabriel, where both of them got 12 points each from scoring a goal and kept keeping a clean sheet against Vassam. Um, so yeah, being able to do uh, to to do just trusty... You can see the other transfer was just trusty to Virgil van Dijk. Van Dijk got two points. Uh, so having been able to do just um, trusty to Gabriel would have been so much better. He would have had so many more points. Also, interestingly enough, the manager of the week from uh, yesterday in the FBL School podcast as well also had a differential captain compared to Holland. Uh, he captained... Um, who was it? I can't remember exactly who it was uh, actually the, yesterday. Uh, but this, cap- this guy captained Palmer for 10 points, which is pretty close to, to what Holland got at least. Uh, yesterday, I think it was Jota who was the, the differential captain, but, but here it was Palmer for, for 20 points in total. Uh, Holland with 13 points as well. Declan Rice is the obviously the major contributor here with 17 points. And I think Rice is kind of an interesting player because he's not taking set pieces for Arsenal and he's doing it fantastically. Like He is really good at set pieces as well. He's, an, again, evolving his game. Uh, took a couple set pieces for West Ham, but not that many. And now he's at Arsenal and he's... All of a sudden, set piece taker extraordinaire for for them. So, uh, so yeah, two assists. Also got a goal against West Ham at the very end. There, really nice shot from Declan Rice. So he's like a semi viable option in in FPL as well. But it's just Arsenal. Uh, they don't really have any double. Uh, they don't really have any double game weeks uh, coming up now. So many people are going to look at Rice, but even even 
even if they had like the perfect fixtures, I think Arsenal, you would rather go with someone like Saka and then double up on defense with Gabriel and Saliba. Like this guy could have done, uh, right? He could, couldn't have done that, I guess, because he had rights already. Um, or you go with someone like Gabriel Jesus or Martinelli, who are now looking a bit better because Arsenal are actually good attacking wise now. But yeah, this team also had Son with four points. Uh, I already mentioned Saka Palmer with a lot of points, Holland with 13. That's basically the bulk of the points, including Gabriel's 12-pointer as well, who he, this guy has starting, uh, thankfully, uh, com- like, unlike me, who benched him for some reason. Uh, Trippier also got four points, decent return from him as well, and that ended up being 94 points for Ugo Chukwu and Jemba. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at what the team is looking like for next game week as well, this game week 25, which is coming up now. Uh, so this is the team for Game Week 25 and my suggested uh, transfers and uh, and moves, basically. Again, I think whole and triple captaincy is, is a pretty simple choice. Uh, Ugo Chukwu uh, didn't actually use his uh, original wildcard either, hasn't used a wildcard all season and has all chips remaining still. So I think triple captaincy seems really nice. Looking at this team as well, he can get to having 10 players in Game Week 29 if he does every single transfer from now until Game Week 29. Uh, with players that play in Game Week 29. So I think free hitting Game Week 29, whether it's or either free hitting 29 or wild card in 27 or 20, 28 potentially uh, to accommodate Game Week 29 is probably the way, the way to go. So I think the transfers could still be used freely on players that don't play in Game Week 29. So that is my suggestion uh, for, for this team. I think there are some interesting moves here. Obviously, this team has just one City player and one Liverpool player. So maybe. This is a candidate for someone who should use their free hit in game 25. That could be an option. Uh, and then have nine players plus like two hits to get 11 players for game 29 and be able to navigate that game week as well without using a um, free hit chip. Uh, you could also walk in game 27 with game 29 in mind as well. So could potentially go with a free hit. Maybe the best option for Guchukfu and Najemba is going with this team, just free hitting and using this team. But obviously, you will not have whole on as triple captain if that's the case. But at the same time, this manager is also ranked around 3 million in the world. So maybe he needs to go a bit differential and do some different tactics and have a different triple captaincy shout at some point of the season to catch up with other people. Uh, but we do expect Holland to be the best triple captaincy choice this season. But that's the thing with uh, with with the, these types of things. Yes, if you want to play the percentages and go for the most likely highest point getter, or usually content creators say that, just go with the one you think will get the most points. Don't worry about the differential thing and stuff. But there is a chance that Holan, for some reason, has two bad games this game week. There is a chance that that happens. It's not likely. It's it's more likely that he has two really good games, or at least one really good game, and has a pretty good score this week, and is a pretty good triple captaincy shout. But there is also a chance that he all of a sudden doesn't live up to the hype. Kind of like it did last year when he had two double game weeks where he both, in both of them he played like decently but not that good. Like Rashford was actually a better triple captaincy choice last season than Holland in the end. Even though Holland had two double game weeks, two separate double game weeks where he could have outscored uh, Rashford's one double game week uh, score. But he didn't. So that could happen again. So for someone who wants to gain a lot of rank... Uh, like this guy who's 3 million in the world, I, I imagine that's not around the place that he wants to be. Uh, in FL, I, th- I don't think most people want to be in, in around the 3 million mark uh, at this point of the season. Then maybe triple captaincy for Holland is not that essential. Maybe you want to go with someone else and just hope for the best. Because, yeah, whether you're 3 million in the world or 5 million in the world at the end of the season, I don't think it really matters that much. But if you can get into the top million, for example, that would be a great achievement. So maybe you want to go with someone else than Holland's triple captaincy shout. And then maybe doing a free hit and having a team like this for 25 and then being able to navigate to 29 with a wild card, for example, in game 27 might not be the worst idea. So that's an alternate thing you could can do as well. But if you just want to play it straight up and save your free hit for either game week 29 or game week 34, for example, which are the two most common like free hits game weeks, then I think you could be kind of aggressive with, with your moves there and getting two city players who will also play in game week uh, 26. Because the bad thing about this team is the fact that they don't have enough players for Game 26 uh, as it stands. Uh, obviously, you have uh, Son and Romero who, who are not going to play in Game 26. Bayer is injured. He's not going to play in Game 26. Uh, Palmer's not going to play in Game 26. That's four players. Virgil van Dijk's not going to play in 26. That's five players. Um, so you need two players more for Game 26. And that's where you can get two, two City players. Um, and still have uh, have uh, enough flexibility to have uh, enough players for game 26 as well. So Trippier to Ake, uh, kind of like 
selling Trippier at this point is, I don't know, Trippier is someone who's going to have really good fixtures going going forward. Newcastle offensively have not been the best, but offensively Trippier has been amazing lately. So selling him is kind of a risk, but at the same time you gain so much money that you can buy significant upgrades elsewhere. So if you downgrade Trippier to Ake, and that's not really a downgrade for this game week uh, in particular, because Ake has a double game week and he's going to be pretty nailed, it seems like, for Man City. Um, if you do that uh, move from Trippier to Ake, you have enough money to go from Rice to Foden, and I think that's a huge upgrade. Uh, even though you would, you would have to bench someone here, you would have to bench either Palmer, Huang Hechan, or Solanke in my, mind, in my mind, maybe Watkins, Saka, Son, and Holland, I think, are no-brainers to start. Um, you would have to bench one of them, but you, you'd bring in Foden as well for this game week, and then game week 26 as well, you'd have Foden and Ake as well, because they're playing in that game week as well. So I think that's a pretty good idea, uh, or pretty good uh, transfer um, tactic for, for this game week. Could also just stand pat, save up to the two free transfers and do, because this team is like decent enough on paper. It doesn't have that many double game week players, I guess, but apart from that, this team is pretty decent. Like most players have decent matches at least. Um, so you could just stand pat and have two transfers to game 26 and maximize your efforts in game 26 and potentially beyond as well. If you want to go with uh, game 29, uh, without using your free hits. You can also save your two transfers and do two players in game 26 that play in 29 as well. Getting someone like Kudos in midfield, um, getting someone in defense or attack, uh, someone like Re Regulon or, or Tony who play in game 29 and game 26. That's also an option as well for this team, I, I, I think. But yeah, I do prefer the move to get in two city players who are going to have a really good double game week and then also play in game 26. And then you can navigate to 29 and beyond that with your chips because you have all chips remaining so i think that's the best tactic going forward i think it's also kind of interesting with the overall rank being uh that uh, that bad i guess uh, where you could go with some differential shots uh, i guess but i kind of like the midfield in general uh, declan rice i i'm a huge fan of in in real life but in terms of fbl still not that sold on him so that's always the way i would move him around but i think if you do rise to foden palmer saka foden huang son is a pretty damn good midfield going forward. Huang is going to have a really good fixture in 26, and beyond that as well, he has really good fixtures. I really like him. Palmer as well is going to be a huge differential once people sell him to make room for players in game 29. Uh, Son is obviously also another huge differential, especially this week as well, when most people will not have him. That's a really interesting shout, and Saka has been so good lately. So I think the midfield is really good. Attacking trio is really good as well. Holan is obviously essential. Watkins is going to have really good, good matches coming up, and then Solanke has that double game week in Game 28 as well, and a really good game in Game 27. So I think this team is actually pretty well set up for the future. Um, and I, I don't mind it really. And maybe this game week you might do the free hits just to have as many double game week players as possible. But yeah, I think you're pretty well set, set up for the future, and I think you'll be even better set up for the future if you do Trippier to Ake and Rise to Foden. Uh, so that's basically my my best suggestion for this team going forward. But yeah, do as you want if you're watching this. Uh, hopefully you do. Um, it would be nice to to hear from you if you are watching this content. If you and if you enjoy, enjoyed the the commentary on your team from me. But yeah, that's it for everything else. Let's move on to my current plans. What I'm looking to do for my game week. This is my current team, and obviously I have one major issue in my team, and that is Trent Alexander Arnold. He is injured. He's not going to play in game week 26. He's just been a letdown in general. He costs way too much money for me to keep him long term because Liverpool will have the blank in 26. They'll have the blank in 29. If I do, I still i am looking to do the free hit in 29. But, uh, but yeah, either way, he does not have the best fixtures going forward and he's injured and he's just been a letdown in general lately. Uh, so Trent has to, to come out and then there's two different options I can do. The first option is being very aggressive and doing another minus four to bring in De Bruyne. I would have De Bruyne and Jota in the same team. I don't think many people can say that while having Holland and Watkins and Saka and all those guys as well. Um, so it would be really nice. I think my Gaming 26 team in particular would be... Uh, my Gaming 25 team would be really good. And my Gaming 26 team would be pretty good as well with that move. Trent to Saliba. Saliba is really good as well playing against Burnley away. I think that's a really good fixture. I would then bench Brantwaite playing against Crystal Palace at home. Play Saliba and Gabriel with Doughty. Then I'd have Jota, Foden, Saka, and De Bruyne in midfield. And then I'll have Holland, Watkins, and Solanke up front. So I really like that team in general um, for game 25. So I really like that. But at the same time, it is another minus four. It is also selling Garnacho, who's actually a pretty decent asset that's his, at this point. Uh, especially if all of a sudden Man United play in game 29, then maybe I have a chance to navigate 29 without using a free hit as well. So. Um, it is kind of sad to sell Garnacho, especially seeing as I benched him for that 16-point hole against West Ham. Again, 
not playing a, a guy against West Ham. Another mistake from me. Uh, but but still, it feels just too good to have De Bruyne in this team. Saliba, someone that I really like to have in this team as well. On top of Gabriel against Burnley, who can see a lot of set pieces. And Arsenal, who are just really, really good at the moment. Uh, it just feels like a pretty natural and nice move as well. But I could just do Trent to Ake and have another City player that way instead. I did mention Ake like way back uh, in in the day when I was looking forward in in game week twenty basically when I did when I did my wild card, the first wild card of the season for me. I actually looked forward to the future and I looked at this game week twenty five and twenty six combo and I thought one of the city defenders will be good in these these uh, two game weeks. And I was thinking Ake, Akanji, Guardiola, those types of players. One of them, those guys and Stones potentially. One of those guys will do really well in these three games in game week twenty five and twenty six for City. I think Ake is the best bet by far now with Guardiola being injured. So Ake is still kind of tempting. And the other move that I could also potentially do is more looking forward to the future and do Trent to Senesi because Senesi has double game week in uh, game week 20, 28 and he also plays in game week 26. But the downside to that is the fact that he plays Man City in game week 26. So it's not really gaining a player at all in game week 26 because he's going to concede against Man City and probably not going to get more points than one point. Potentially get zero points from game 26. So... He's not the best player for game 26, even though he has a double game week in game 28. And he also has pretty good fixtures in game 30 onwards. If I want to keep my wall card long term, um, then he would be a decent shout, I guess, for the for the long term future. But there's also a chance that I wall card in game 27 and then getting Senesi at this point would just be a waste of time and, and money, basically. So I think I prefer the Saliba move um, or Ake move if I want to get a defender. Obviously, I would have liked to have Ake over Saliba as well, but I can't have four City players, so I can't do both Trent to uh, Ake and then Garnacho to De Bruyne because I would have too many City players, obviously. The final other potential transfer plan that I could do is uh, if Salah, because Liverpool are going to play the first game in, in the game week, so we're probably going to get a leak if Salah is starting or not, and if we get the leak that Salah is starting in the first match in game 25, I think I might just be too tempted to bring him back in, basically. Uh, and I will be able to get him in, but I would have to sell someone decent, I think, um, to do that. I don't think I can get Garnacho to, to sell out unless I... Yeah, I, I don't think that's possible. I think even if I sell Trent, I will only have like 3.8 or something um, to buy a player for to be able to get uh, Salah. I think I'm a little bit short to get Salah in for Garnacho, so I would have to sell someone else. It would likely be Palmer, probably, just because I might just get, bring him back in again for game of 27 on a wall card. That might be the um, the play for me. So if Salah is starting that game, if there's a leak that Salah is starting, I really want him in my, in my team, but it's just a matter of who I sell. Do I sell Jota? I don't think... I'm, I, I wouldn't feel good about doing that. I wouldn't sell Foden, obviously. He has a really good double game week. Sokka at this point as well would be really hard to sell. I had him on a free hit team for game week um, game week 25 as well, so... Yeah, I don't really like selling any of my midfielders apart from potentially Garnacho. Uh, and I wouldn't be able to afford Salah with that. So I, th I still think the burn is to play for me, even if Salah is back ready to play. But it would be just too tempting to have Salah in this game week where a lot of people wouldn't be able to have him. So, so yeah, I I'd have to look into that. Maybe I do Watkins to Darwin as well to afford Salah and have a triple Liverpool that way. But I think that would mess me up for game 26 as well. So... So yeah, probably just going to stick with uh, the Trent to Saliba and Garnacho to De Bruyne move, most likely. Or I just do the Ake move, because that's also a pretty nice and safe option as well. Um, I do quite like the thought of starting Brantwaite, though. But if I get in Ake, or Saliba for that matter, Brantwaite would have to be benched again. And probably get a lot of points on my bench, because that's usually what he's been doing for me. But yeah, in general, quite like the look of my team. I have uh, Doughty, Jota, Foden, Holan. As double game week players, that's four double game week players, and then I might be able to bring in De Bruyne or Ake as well. So that would be five double game week players for game week 25, which is pretty decent while still having a team for game week 26 as well, which I think is not going to be the case for a lot of people. Um, so, so, yeah, pretty good, um, pretty good team for me. I'm pretty happy about this uh, this game week. Pretty happy about my team going forward as well. But I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. I think especially if I get De Bruyne and I have De Bruyne and Jota and they both do really, really well this game week. I think that's going to bode well for me. But obviously, I don't have Darwin. That's the big drawback for me this game week. And that's the thing that I'm most, the most worried about. So I could potentially bring in him as well um, for someone like Solanke and then bring Solanke back in eventually. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see what I do. Uh, Alvarez as well could also be an option, to be honest. 
but I don't know. I think for me currently, Trent to Saliba, Garnacho de Bruyne seems like the most interesting option for me in general. And that's pretty much it for the video. It's been a pretty long one. I don't want to drag it out too much. Game of 25 has been talked about enough anyway from most other people. So, so yeah, hope you have an enjoyable game week. It's going to be fun. A lot of games coming up now. There's going to be a Premier League game every day apart from Thursday, I think, in the next like week or so. Um, so Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I think is going to be just pre Premier League, Premier League, Premier League, Premier League every single day. So that's going to be pretty exciting. So I hope you will enjoy that uh, that's the uh, future or those uh, those matches in the Premier League and I hope you enjoyed this uh, content in the future as well so please subscribe if you haven't already and uh, with that I'm going to say thank you for watching and goodbye